cool here in Southern California, 46 downtown LA right now. It's uh, warmed into the 50s. And a city defined by fame and glamour, but like any other, Los Angeles has its dark side. And what lies beneath in the city of angels, in the words of one crime writer, is as bad as there is. The police here say it's the nation's gang capital. Neighborhoods like Compton, Inglewood and Watts, made famous by rappers, made notorious by deadly gang wars. Yeah, this is it. This is our whole little square area. <clears throat> Manchester to Century, from Prairie to La Brea. And once you pass over on the other side of La Brea, there's Inglewood families again. The geography of Inglewood is the history of gang crime. It is the world where Kerry has lived his whole life. And it's crazy because you know, you've literally had times where you can walk across the street and, and have a shootout and then run back across the street and you're back in your neighborhood again. He is a crip, a soldier in the vast and complex war that's raged for decades against their rivals, the Bloods. You wake up every day in it, you go to sleep every day in it, and you know, I mean, you never know what the day's going to bring. I guess, I mean, we can take a turn here you know, as we start going down the street. So I'll just show you from just waking up and not knowing that today was almost going to be the last day of my life. Waking up not knowing that today is the day that I wasn't going to see the streets again for another 16 months. It's just it's crazy. You never know what the next day is going to bring. But one thing's for sure, something's going to happen. And nine out of ten times, it's not going to be good. The Sentinel Hospital right here. Of course, all our, every time we've been shot and everything, I've been shot, stabbed before, always end up here, sitting in another hospital. This is it. This in jail. And funerals. And that story goes back decades. Somebody uh, came up with a handgun. In the 90s, gang violence was an epidemic. Really, really loud, like bam, 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 bam. Dozens of murders a month, a cycle of revenge killing. <laughs> Things are changing because the gangsters themselves are turning young people away from violence. In the neighborhood of Watts, they're used to fending for themselves. There's car wash and barbecue raising money for a local family to pay for a funeral. But a place most famous for its riots in the 60s is now the focus of the war on gangs. Into it. I was shot in the face. Yeah. If I had to turn the wrong way, this way instead of that way and all that because it was close range. I was shot eight with a 45 and two with a 38. Everyone has the scars, the tattoos, but gang elders like Andre, a crip, now teach the local youth that there is an alternative life. We was committing our own genocide, you know. Ghettos are self-cleaning ovens. You've got to keep them alive first. And when you get to the point where you're keeping them alive, now we can start educating them. Now economics. Economics play a major part. But I still got to keep you alive before I can get to the economic part. Even when you tell a child, you know, don't be like me, uh, do this, and tell them all the positive things, and they don't realize it's visual creatures. So they watch you. They're hearing what you're saying, but they're watching what you're doing. So you have to show them. And you can't get mad at them because you used to be like that. When people used to try to talk to me, I used to say, oh, he a mark, oh, he wa Every, anything negative I could say because I wasn't ready to change, I used to do it. So now that I have changed and I see people still doing what I used to do, I really can't get mad at them. I'm just here for you when you need me or when you come around and just hope you live through it or hope you don't get be in jail for the rest of your life before that turnaround comes. Everything good with you? All right, man, just let me know, all right? This is what it looks like, Elder Big Mike patrolling a school in the Crip heartland of Grape Street, a gang veteran with words of warning. Just don't get caught up in that, man. Stay clear of all the gangs and stuff like that. You got me? Yeah. I'll check with y'all Monday, all right? All right. Okay, all right. All right. All right. Is it working? Well, on the front line, the LAPD says it is. Even if, as we witnessed on one patrol, gang shootings do still happen. It's kind of an ongoing dispute here. They pull up, they see somebody hanging out, they shoot at him, they hit him, sometimes they miss. This time they hit him in the arm. Um, he's, he's lucky. Gang crimes like this have halved in six years. In those haunts like Compton, local officials talk of a truce between the Bloods and the Crips. Police are skeptical of that. 
is it, if it is a war on gangs, do you think it can ever be won? No. In my, in my opinion, it can't be won. We don't, you don't have the manpower as far as officers. You just got to contain it somehow. There's too many gang members. It's a way of life. You just lose that, that fight. AM 1460 KTYM Inglewood, California. It's a measure of how gangs are part of the fabric here, that there's a show called Gang Talk on the radio. We're infecting these kids absolutely, but with a peace accord to stabilize their circumstances and give them a chance to live. Right. Really, that's really what we're trying to do. And Lita Heron had nothing to do with gangs until her home was caught in the crossfire. After a while, there wasn't any place in the house where I could hide any further. And when that bullet came through the window and hit the top of the floor uh, wall, uh, that's when I got enraged. And I think enraged is a fair word because I took my fear and turned it into activism. This show is now part of those attempts to break the cycle of violence. You can't kill it, you can't squash it, and you're not going to arrest your way out of this. What we were trying to do was stop up, stop stacking up the pile of dead bodies. Police didn't care about that head count. We did. We did. So we had to push them and force them to allow us to have a chance to do this. And what we discovered, we have the right answer. We Some of them don't even know they're dead. They don't know they're dead. So that involves what she calls the ex-participants, men like Skip Townsend, a man who paints a vivid picture of getting out. So a lot of people thought that I was homicidal, uh, thought that I was some crazy guy. Actually, I was suicidal. Just imagine me dressing up each and every day to go and be killed, to, to go out there not knowing if today is my last day. So there was a guy who asked me, do I love my family, my daughters? And I said, yes. He said, would you die for him? And I poked my chest down and said, I'll die for him. He said, are you willing to live for him? So I hadn't understood that at that time. And so for everyone who goes out there and says, I don't care, I don't care, and they're out in the streets creating some sort of havoc, it's because they gave up on themselves and they gave up on life. Turning point for me, 1998, I'm in L.A. County Jail facing two life sentences followed by six years. My father dies. I'm looking for someone to talk to, and I could not have an intelligent conversation in that environment. I knew then that I... I already had stopped being violent, but I knew then I had to stop hanging around the same people. I had to change the, the players on the playground or change my playground altogether. It's an automatic. It's a 9mm semi-auto Ruger. There are plenty still out there. Weeks after a gang shooting, we were with police when they arrested the alleged gunman and found the weapon in his sister's home. He's a known gang member of this area. I guess we surprised him. He opened the front door, he shut it, locked it, went through the back, we got him in the back. Um, she told us where he slept. We went there, found the gun. People will tell you here that getting arrested often makes you one of the lucky ones. It was great. Great, great, great boys. In the space of 52 days, Kathy Wooden lost two sons to gang shootings. That drives her own personal war on gangs, which she says can be won. No, I can't say the world, and I know I can't be a voice everywhere, but I know I can be a voice, and I am a voice in this community. And so the different areas that don't get along, my goal is that we start at least getting along to the point to where we don't shoot each other on sight. But everybody was just in disbelief that Brandon had gotten killed and, you know, losing two, two kids at such a short time was so devastating. Do you think, do you think there's a, there'll ever be a day when that, yes. that, that violence is yes. gone? Yes. You're confident of that? I'm confident of that. Why do you say that? Because there's too many people on board. It's too many people on board with this. And for those who's not on board with it, They'll be pushed aside. Back out in Inglewood, Kerry the Crip has a very different opinion. It's, it's, it's never going to stop. It's, it's, it's like this saying, besides commit genocide on the gang, right, there's no way to stop it but just to kill them all, drop a nuke and, and wait for the land to clear and start over. That's the only way it would happen. It's like this saying, if you have a roach-infested apartment, you burn the building down if you want to get rid of them all.
But here's why there's some hope. On the same day, we met Kerry on the building site in Hollywood where he's just started work. A lifelong crip working alongside Terry, a blood. Two men given the chance of building a new life outside of gang crime. And even though we out of it, it's never over. People still know your face and you're still known out there in these streets. So it's day by day, just take it. Just do what you can to do right and go on with your life. It's kind of good. It's good, you gotta, you know, it's better, I ain't going to jail, I ain't got to worry about the police. Like, I, the helicopter, I probably would have been like this. <laughs> <laughs> I got to look over my, well, I still got to watch over my shoulder. So like he said, I still know my face, I got tattoos and stuff. They reflect on a war that's taken as many as 15,000 lives and how there is a way out for those who want to take it. Greg Milam, Sky News, Los Angeles.